Hey guys, this one here with another 3.5 Betrayal Guide, this time featuring Juggernaut Toxic Rain. Um, this is uh, something I got requested to do a lot after people saw it in the... Um, I was doing a custom league, a couple of custom leagues, and uh, one of the builds uh, in the really, really challenging hard leagues with like all the damage mods enabled in like 40 or 50% monster life. Um, I played Juggernaut Toxic Rain just to get something like a little bit extra tanky that still, you know, had enough damage. Um, this was the, the Rise League. And uh, yeah, it turned out pretty well. I can't remember what killed it. I'm pretty sure I died in Delve. Um, should be in the red playlist. And um, yeah, it was a fairly fun build and someone or quite a lot of people asked if I could make a build guide on it. So here it is. Um, Quill Rain has been nerfed for this build, however it should still be fine. I would generally, even with a like white short bow, you know, you do a fairly good amount of damage. And uh, if you can get your hands on a um, Storm Cloud that has very high um, attack speed, which is the main thing you're looking for in this build. And Endgame, we were already, uh, when the last time I did Toxic Rain, I was using a plus 3 bow with 20% more attack damage anyway. Um... And the bandits for this build is skill point. The Pantheon is Solaris and Shikari. And upgrading Shikari in pretty much every build is really nice. Gives you poison immunity and stuff like that. Um, I'm going to be using Path of Building for explaining a lot of this build. If you don't have it, check the description down below. Definitely worth getting. And uh, I usually like walking through how I do my guides for those of you who are new to them. So I do a like per point system to explain um, generally what you should do point for point. Now, um, this hopefully helps a lot of newer players who are a little bit confused what to take point-wise. There'll be some variations in this which I'll explain later on as well. Um, here in skills you can see that like what you're using. You don't actually start this with Toxic Rain because it's a little weak early on. Uh, on a 3 link and stuff, you generally want at least a 4 link and wait till you have some of the decent support gems and a little like something like Ascending is quite nice as well. Um, you really see the damage go up higher on later when you get the second ascendancy, but it, it's all included in the points that your second ascendancy is unyielding, which gives you um, damage per endurance charge as well. Um, and like I said, all the skills you want to use are here. I don't think I left anything out, um, but it is right before betrayal starts, so we haven't gotten a lot of sleep. I also use um, gear sets here. So you can see um, this is like some recommendations for day one gear, like Stormcloud, um, go to Blood Aqueduct for Metabula, just you know, use the generic any chest until then. A five link is nice if you can get one. Um, Winds of Change is quite nice. Usually not that many people use it anymore, so make sure you try to get one with high projectile damage and high life if you can. Not used that much, so shouldn't be too bad. And um, plus as well. Um, in game, this is basically the sort of bow that I had on my last Toxic Rain build. You can make plus one quivers fairly easy as well. This is PWDB, which we'll put in the description. Um, of course, I remember it's jagged, metallic, and corroded, or serrated. Serrated? Yes. Serrated, corroded, and metallic gives you a very high chance of, uh, it basically gives you the chance of life and additional hour. You can't get wed on these quivers for like selling them, but you can see here that I like, these are the ones you've selected, corroded, metallic, serrated, and uh, you have very, very nice chances for hitting plus one arrow. So definitely, if you want to make plus one quivers, that is one way to do it. Devotus Devotion, um, so much movement speed, lots of decks. Really, really nice. No, no life, but it's got chaos rest too with incursion coming back. That could be nice. So recommend that. Tom's heart is pretty easy to self farm. Uh, the king's heart divination card drops in volcano. They did say that they've changed some divination card drop rates. I would be very surprised if this was one of the ones that got changed. Very, very surprised. So Tom's heart is pretty easy to self farm. I usually don't recommend buying one um, because. Relatively to how expensive they are, and relatively to uh, how rare they are to drop, they are actually quite easy to self farm compared to that. I mean, it's not like you know, 20 minutes, it's quite a few hours of farming, but a lot of the other stuff in the game is harder compared to the rarity. Two Socket Tomb Fist as well is very nice if you can get like 
Onslaught on kill, damage over time, and life. That would be great to have. Um, and then there's like some examples of um, duels and stuff here. Facing can be nice as well. I generally don't put resists on the gear in the guide because it's more important. It doesn't really matter if you particularly get it on a belt, on a ring. It doesn't matter where you're getting the resist. After Act 4, please try to be resist capped, especially if you're playing on hardcore. Based on fire, cold and lightning resist, chaos resist, not as important. Um, and then remember that you lose resists when you kill Kitava Act 5 and Kitava Act 10. Um, in the notes as well, we have exactly where you can buy all the gems. Mr. Madiki does this, and we'll hopefully do more with this in the future. That should be pretty nice. Hopefully that helps new players. Um, a recommendation early on too. When you are leveling with like Crown Summon Sunder, it's not bad to take like, I'd probably recommend two-handed now with like, you don't have to find two one-handers. Um, taking some like two-handed damage nodes, uh, maybe some attack speed, stuff like that, it can be pretty nice early on. Um, so you're not rushing straight to the projectile nodes. And that shouldn't be much of a respec either. You do get like a decent amount of regrets for free. So your sentency does give you quite a lot of tank. You get endurance charge generation for free and you can play around with either having castle damage taken or not. Um, like I usually prefer not having it on, but if it's at a fairly high level, I would probably level it more like um, level 10, maybe 12, so it doesn't proc all the time. And um, you will be like generating them back very quickly through the, your, your ascendancy. And then um, you, it's quite a lot of tank, you know, obviously it does give you damage as well. You could look into getting the Combs Way um, rings late game. Definitely worth getting, but they're also like crazy expensive. They would like increase your regen by quite a lot. Um, damage wise, you could also look into, I think it's called a Baron Fossil. Gives you chaos damage. I think that might only be on Amulet, but you uh, also have the uh, Envy Essence. But uh, again, the PWDB website that will link in the description, you can look up what what can be rolled with different things. So, um, Chaos, Chaos Damage is definitely not too hard to get on Rakes and Amulets. Uh, either, either if the Fossil works or um, the Essence definitely works. Envy, I think. Um, a Dying Sun is very nice for this as well, because you're using both Projectile and AoE. Might be pretty expensive this thing, but definitely worth getting if you can. Um, on your flasks as well, generally make sure you have um, immune to bleed, immune to freeze, immune to curse, and immune to shock if you can. That's like in the order of importance as well. Um, a lot of people don't care enough about their flasks and they're so powerful. Generally you want them always on when you're clearing, like just flick away, flick away. Um, to make a plus three bow as well, uh, or a plus three bow with 20% more damage, plus three is very easy to make, but uh, the 20% more damage is definitely worth getting. The recipe for this with um, fossils is corroded, prismatic, metallic, and serrated. You want to do this on item level 82, elder thicket bow. If it's 83, then you can get a chaos roll that you don't want, makes it so much harder to get, and that's why 82s are more expensive than 83s and above. Um, I've had a lot of fun with this build. I played it in a very hard league and I thought about making it to fight stuff like Uber Elder. You have a very, very easy like changeover with like you can either remove the damage or a little bit of tank and get uh, unstoppable so Uber Elder doesn't slow you down. And I really do like having um, that ability with like being Juggernaut and not getting slowed down so you don't get caught in like the Shaper Balls. So that's like one of the things I thought about doing this build for. I have played with this Pathfinder as well and hopefully make time to make um, a Pathfinder guide at some point. There are quite a lot of guides for that already and um, um, we won't have time to do that before Betrayal League starts. I'm basically staying up and trying to put out as many guides as possible. Hopefully this helps you guys. I have uh, put out a few other videos that are worth checking out 
as well, like League Start Guides and um, Catch Up videos. So check those out too, see if there's anything you like. Um, hopefully this helps, good luck in Betrayal, and um, I hope you guys have a fun time. Good luck, try to die less than I do. <laughs>